appreciate the honor to speak uh, on this very important occasion. I just have a few words to say, and, and when you go last, everyone else has pretty much said it all. Just to first express a word of appreciation, certainly to Evergreen Cemetery for accepting the uh, unidentified and unclaimed victims of Jonestown 32 years ago when it was a very unpopular thing to do. Um, certainly appreciate the work of the Jonestown Memorial Fund, uh, Jim Jones Jr., John Cobb, and my husband, Fieldy McGee, of whom I'm very proud. Um, I also appreciate the singing of O'Malley Jones, and just uh, really appreciate your being here. I also want to say that I do appreciate the faithfulness of Winona Norwood who steadfastly has conducted memorial services on this hillside every November 18th, year in and year out. Second, I want to speak a word of recollection. I think of the many people, living and dead, who would like to have joined us at this memorial. Dr. Chris Hatcher, Michael Belafonte, King, Ezra Schacht, and my mother Barbara Moore are particularly in mind. I received an email from someone in Indiana who wrote that he was too sick and too poor to come out. Let's take a moment of silence to remember those who cannot be with us on this historic occasion. Third, a word of... Okay, the, I declare the moment of silence over. Okay. <laughs> no, it declares the moment of silence over. Third, a word of perspective. We do not come here to separate the just from the unjust, the worthy from the unworthy. We leave judgment to the wisdom of God and the mercy of Allah. We leave judgment to the law of karma and the compassion of the Buddha. We leave judgment to the writers of history. That history is being inscribed this very day as we gather to remember and to mourn. We probably don't agree on much outside the gates of Evergreen Cemetery, but we are united in our common loss at this site and at this time. Fourth, a word of liberation, which several have already spoken. Today we are able to set aside our anger and hate, our guilt and shame, our fear and anguish. Freed of these burdens, we are able to move forward to do the work that needs to be done. Finally, a word of remembrance. The remains of my two sisters, Carolyn and Annie, are buried in another cemetery. The remains of my nephew, Kimo, are buried here. Today, they're united in this memorial. But we know that our loved ones are not here on a monument or not in this hillside. They're, they're here in our hearts. They're part of who we are and who we always will be. But when we are gone in 10 or 20 or 50 years, this tribute will remain to remind the world of that fateful day and the people who lived and died in Jonestown. Let this memorial to our losses remind us that we can be better people than we are and that we must be. Thank you. we're going to have Charles Cross come up and uh, he will be introducing our next guest speaker. Yes, I sure. I um, am very pleased to be here today. I'm Charles Krauss. I was with the Washington Post. Uh, I was a reporter who accompanied Congressman Brian 
uh, into Jonestown and was one of those who was wounded on the airstrip when uh, he was killed and and this whole very tragedy sort of began to unfold that day. Um, I'm here and I want to thank the organizers of the memorial service for inviting me and for inviting Ambassador Karen, uh, Guyana's ambassador to the United States. I, I know that uh, he uh, is here uh, to express uh, an, a kind of mission of peace and reconciliation because there are many of us, uh, many different parties who were a part of this whole tragedy and um, it's important because many people in the United States only have one image of, of Guyana and they associate Guyana with Jonestown and they really don't know much more about the country or the people there and it's important that Guyana too uh, put, put the past to rest and, and, and for all of us to go forward remembering what happened because they're important lessons for all of us but moving forward and I think that's the spirit that is being expressed here today um, and that's how I feel personally and I know that's how Ambassador Karen feels as well. He is one of Guyana's most distinguished uh, diplomats. He is both ambassador to the United States as well as ambassador to the Organization of American States. He represents Guyana and a number of international institutions that are uh, working with the country to improve its economy and 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 to see progress in Guyana. So uh, it's in that spirit of of reconciliation that Ambassador Karen is here today, and I hope you'll welcome him uh, and hear what he has to say. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish to express my appreciation to Mr. Fielding McGee and his fellow organizers for their kind invitation to make a few remarks at this Jonestown Memorial Dedication Service. I also wish to specially thank Charles Cross, a miraculous survivor, for his warm introduction and for forging the connections which have enabled my attendance here today. The world has come to regard the Jonestown events as a catastrophe so unconscionable that it has defaced humanity. Today, you are memorializing those who have been laid to rest. But they were hardly the only ones to have been affected by the occurrences at the Jonestown Commune, the Port Kaituma Airstrip, and at Lamaha Gardens in Georgetown. Trauma, emotional suffering, and stigmatisms have also been visited upon the innocent survivors of the tragedy and family members of the victims. Indeed, the Jonestown event continues to captivate the imagination of the world and perpetuate a blemish on the images of both the United States and Guyana. Fortunately, in spite of the disturbing nature of the occurrences, they have failed to adversely affect the friendly relations which have always existed between the people of Guyana and the people of the United States. Americans often ask me where was I and what was I doing at that time? On the day following the disaster, I showed up for work at the radio station in Georgetown. Part of my job was to read the news and I was among the first persons to deliver information about the events to the Guyanese public. Guyana, as you know, is a relatively young country having celebrated our 45th independence anniversary just last Thursday. 
In 1978, there was no television service and the public information system was under a restrictive regime of state control. Unbeknown to me, the news items which had been prepared for broadcast had been devised to conceal the enormity of the tragedy from the Guyanese public. Being none the wiser, I was really misleading radio listeners by vastly understating the actual number of victims of the tragedy. Obscuring the true facts from the Guyanese public was facilitated by the remote location of the Jonestown commune from any populated areas. However, this sham was quickly exposed. Overseas telephone calls were informing people about the reports from the international media. The authorities in Georgetown were then obliged to release more accurate information to the population bit by bit. To the people of Guyana, those sad occurrences were totally alien to them and completely divorced from their reality. In fact, the average citizen had had no idea that such a place like Jonestown existed in their own country. The Guyanese people viewed the incident principally as a humanitarian calamity. After the shocking truth had been exposed, a sentiment of great anguish at the loss of so many lives and feelings of sympathy for the victims swept over the nation. I have come here today to reiterate those condolences. I join you in the expectation that the memorial which you're dedicating today would provide a measure of closure and catharsis for those who continue to be victimized, as well as to help erase the undeserved stigma which many of you, just like the people of Guyana, have endured these past 33 years. The events occurred at a time when the prevailing international realities in tandem with the local conditions created by a dictatorial political system provided a context for the People's Temple Agricultural Project to organize and operate within our borders with impunity. Guyanese vividly recall that period as a difficult time in our history it was a season when the results of national elections were falsified, human rights were trampled, and demonstrations in, in favor of political freedoms were quelled by violence. Although it has never been claimed that any Guyanese citizen participated in the Jonestown events, either as perpetrator or as victim, it is beyond dispute that the country's political leadership at the time was compromised and there was an absence of appropriate security guarantees. While monuments, memorials and mere words would never assuage the depth of hurt and grief, it is worth mentioning that our two countries have both learnt their lessons. Today, such a disaster would be much more easily prevented. But more importantly, Guyana is now a different country. Guyanese have now broken the shackles of political oppression and have developed a forward-looking and modern society. Today, our nation is recognized for its bold and innovative strategies for growth and development within a stable and democratic framework. The survivors who are here today have borne witness to the country's breathtaking natural beauty, its abundant resources, and the unparalleled reputation of its people for warmth, generosity, and genuine hospitality to all those who visit our shores. 
It was chosen over other locations because the people's temple believed that Guyana offered its members a safe and peaceful place to live. Just as you are doing here today, Guyana is turning new pages on this dark chapter in our past and is rising to face new heights, even as we bow, as we all bow, once more today in remembrance of the victims of the tragedy. Thank you. I'd like to thank you again, Mr. Ambassador. We appreciate you taking out the time to come here. He actually lives back east in D.C., and so this was a trip for him, and we really appreciate him making this trip.